rolling mill embossing, the first thing you do is make sure that the metal that you're trying to emboss is well annealed. So I'm going to heat this to a dull red. This is sterling silver. Um, I wouldn't use anything thinner than 0.7 for the embossing because as you roll it, it will emboss it, but it'll make it thinner. So the first thing we'll do is anneal this. So we start with our normal flame, about 100 mil long, just the gas, turn the oxy on. And because this is a large piece of metal, I'll increase the flame again by the same amount more oxy until the orange goes away and then we're ready to anneal. So just brush the flame back end to end, back and forth. And I run the flame along the middle so that instead of just being straight on, it, it will run down the length of the middle. So it keeps more of the flame on the metal itself. So if you turn your light out and you get this to a dull red. Okay, that's perfect. Oxy off first and then gas. And we need to quench this now to cool it. Once you've quenched the metal, you can just bend the end a little bit. If it's soft enough that it, you can tweak it and it holds its shape, it's annealed. And what we need to do is make a pattern. And one of the ways that you can emboss is to use thick watercolor paper. So this is 0.75 thick and it's firm enough that it will hold a pattern and it has a bit of a texture in it and it will also put that texture on your metal. What I do, just cut the metal paper and you want it to completely cover the metal end to end side to side now you can take a scalpel and you can cut patterns out you can also take just a paper punch and punch holes randomly whatever you cut in this will transfer to the metal <coughs> normally after you've annealed this it'll be oxidized you need to pickle it, but because I'm showing you how to use the rolling mill, I'm not going to, so you'll be able to see the pattern better. Now we go to the rolling mill. So you open the rolling mill right up and you put the metal and the paper all the way through the roller, so you should be able to see it on the back side or feel it. So then you Close the mill gently, just using your fingers on the middle of the wheel, and read the dial. Turn the dial to zero so that you can open this right up, take the paper out, and then you turn it back to zero. Now, at this point, that is the thickness of your package. And we'll just turn it half a turn tighter and roll the material right through. Now 
Now at this point we've embossed the pattern onto the metal. I'll lightly sand this so that you can see what it is. But you can see that it's rolled the metal thinner and it's completely flattened the paper. It's destroyed it. So this is a one-time deal. You can use lace. Uh, you could do a skeleton leaf. You can do just about anything. But you need to, if you're going to do a skeleton leaf, you need to put another piece of metal on the top so that it will push the imprint in deeper. And uh, the metal can be the same metal that you're using for your main piece or it can be something different like brass or copper. Now because we've perished this we'll just throw it away. And we take our sanding stick if I can find it. And if I just lightly sand over the top you'll be able to see what we've done just by punching a few holes in a bit of paper. As you can see that the pattern from the paper, that nice texture is on there and there's a nice raised pattern from the holes. It's a very quick way to emboss metal and it's very distinctive. The only other way to get this look is to etch it in acid. It's a nice process. You can see where the end of the paper was on the metal. So the end of the paper finished there and we have this nice embossed pattern and then we're back to our original thickness of metal here with no pattern at all.